about John Hunter. Uh, we, we are about to start. We, we are about to start. Uh, I apologize for these technical problems. Uh, so if you wanted to be in the workshop of sustainable benefits uh, of inclusion on the internet, you are at the right place. Uh, the workshop uh, number 129 is organized by the Dynamic Coalition on Accessibility and Disability. And before I start, let me give you some workshop information, uh, uh, technical information in fact. The workshop uh, is, uh, can be accessed uh, through this website, that is uh, through the ITU website, themes, accessibility, DC workshops, and so on. You have captioning, uh, which you can also access through the streamtext.net player question mark even equals CFI-IGF7 and we have remote participation. Uh, it has been foreseen that the remote moderator would be Ginger Park. Uh, unfortunately, she cannot be with us. So uh, in the last minute, Judy Okait took the job and I am really thankful to her. Uh, as you can see, we have foreseen uh, four panelists, two remote panelists and two panelists who are physically present. Uh, we are trying to establish the remote connection. Uh, this is a kind of experimental thing. I hope we are going to succeed. In case we don't, uh, we, are, we are trying to do our best and. Uh, give a short summary of the presentations uh, the remote panelists were supposed to give up. So uh, uh, in this panel I, or in this workshop I'm going to give a short uh, introduction about the activities of the Dynamic Coalition on Accessibility and Disability, uh, say a few words about the workshop. Uh, as I mentioned the remote panelists are using WebEx uh, and then we are going to show you the presentations and we are going to have a short uh, time for questions and answers and we are going to wrap up. So, uh, some words about the Dynamic Coalition Accessibility and Disability. Uh, the coalition has been established after the second IGF in Rio in 2007 in Rio we had a ITU had a workshop the International Telecommunication Union had a workshop on uh, accessibility and at that point of time it was decided to create a dynamic coalition uh, the aim of the dynamic coalition is to facilitate interaction to ensure that ICT is accessible in the key debates around the uh, internet governance. Uh, we would like to build a future where all sectors of the global community have equal access to the information society. Uh, since uh, 2007, we have organized workshops in all IGF events. And you can see more details about these activities on the website of the ITU www.itu.int themes slash accessibility slash DC. Uh, I have the honor to present you Andrea Sachs, who is not with us today, but she is with us remotely. She is the coordinator of the Dynamic Coalition of Accessibility. She is a known advocate for ICTs for persons with disabilities. In fact, she is a key person in the creation of all accessibility events in the International Telecommunication Union. She is the convener of the Joint Coordination Activity on Accessibility and Human Factors. 
Uh, the second key person is Alexander Gaspari, who is also uh, participating remotely. She is the accessibility coordinator in the ITU Telecommunication Standardization Bureau, and she has been behind uh, the organization of all these activities, including this workshop as well. Uh, the topic uh, we are going to uh, treat today is the sustainable benefits of inclusion on the internet. Uh, we hope to be able to highlight methods of achieving inclusion on the internet and try to demonstrate some of the long-term sustainable benefits that accrue to all of society. Uh, we plan to have as panelists uh, uh, Professor Arun Mehta uh, from the Bidirectional Access Promotion Society of India. Uh, we have or had with us Jorge Plano. He's back. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, from ISOC, Argentina. Uh, on my right, Shadi Abuzara. Uh, from the W3C Web Accessibility Initiative Austria and I am Peter Major, I am the co-coordinator of the DCAD that is the Dynamic Coalition Accessibility and Disability. So as I said uh, we hope to have uh, remote moderator Jinjul Pak but uh, unfortunately she can't be with us today. Uh, we plan to have four presentations uh, one from Arun, uh, uh, unfortunately he is not with us, so I, I think we shall leave it until the end and we, have, we are going to give a short summary of his presentation. We have Jorge Plano with us, hopefully he, he can give his presentation about the growth of the e-book market, promises and dangers for accessibility. Shadi is going to give a presentation about web accessibility now and at the end I'm going to uh, present you with the activities of the ITU and the United Nations Commission on Science and Technology for Development on Accessibility for Persons with Disabilities. Uh, this will be an overview. Uh, for those of you who are interested, I listed the contacts and uh, uh, probably you will have plenty of op opportunities to, to uh, get to the details. Mm -hmm. So uh, I listed all the contacts of the panelists and in addition to that you have the uh, email address for the DCAT secretariat at the ITU. So, Without much ado, uh, Andrea cannot hear you very well. You can't hear me, Andrea. Oh. So I hope Jorge is still with us, he's with us, and he will be able to, to give his presentation. Before doing that, I would like to introduce him. Jorge Plano uh, was born in Argentina and he, he lives there. He's graduated in information systems and consultant uh, in ICT. He created and directed the Centro Tecnologías para La accessibilidad y la vida implementante CETARI, Center of Technologies for Accessibility and Independent Life of the University of uh, Technological Nacional in Argentina. 
where he teaches accessibility and assistive te technology with credits for information engineering degrees since 2005. Jorge is involved in ICT policies since the 80s and in the early 90s. He was director of the IT policies at the Secretariat of Science and Technology of Argentina, participated in the elaboration of the projects of laws for accessibility of government websites. The last one is now in the committees of the Senate. He was involved in the internet governance policies in ICANN since startup and participate in the creation of LACNIC, Latin American and Caribbean Internet Address Registry. He is organizing events on web accessibility in Argentina me, since more than 10 years. Andreas, as you speak to the mic. That's what I'm doing. And has been making the presentation on ICT policies on accessibility in many forums, domestic and international. So after this in introduction i hope we still have jorge jorge the floor is yours can i have the is it is this his presentation or yeah okay can i take it please yes thank you hello could you, could you hear me hello uh, yes jorge hello? we hear you go ahead The return is very, very noisy. Uh, I don't know if. <laughs> oh yeah, Chadi. <laughs> uh, okay. I I don't know if, if I can share my uh, desktop for the presentation. I will try. Jorge, can you hear me? Jorge? Okay, no, Jorge, you need to click on... Jorge? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, can you click on... Uh, can you... Um, yeah. In order to share, you need to share uh, a file, okay? Share... W I'm going to give you back the sharing... Uh, the presenter mode please click share and file okay Add file, not, not, not. Jorge can you hear me and uh, not application but file not application but file Jorge can you can you hear me well. yeah, yes, I okay yes, I on the top left menu there's share and I then click on file. As, as no, don't share application. Share file so that we can still see the other uh, chat room. So just click share, file. File. Yes, and put. File. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I am going to, to share, to share file. Yes, I am looking for the file. <laughs> just a minute. Yes, he's looking for the file. One sec. I think it's going. Okay, did you find the file? Jorge, did yes, you... Uh, it's going, it's going. I cannot hear you. No, he said it's fine. Yeah, but we cannot see about your presentation. Can you please... About 80%. USB is with you. Yeah, USB is with you. Doesn't work. Yeah, it's correct. I don't know. It's, it's uploading the file. There's a problem with. Yes. Yes, it's working now. Perfect. So we can see your presentation you now. now presentation? Yes. Yes. Please go ahead. Oh. Uh, okay. 
Okay. Go ahead. Yes. Um, just a minute. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, okay. Well, I'm sorry for the technical inconvenience. <laughs> inconvenience. Um, well, uh, it is a pleasure to be uh, there uh, virtually. <laughs> um, the at 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 present we we have a relate. Uh, my presentation uh, is re related to the accessibility of uh, person with disabilities to the to the books. Uh, at present we we have two parallel processes. Uh, on one side, uh, there is a dig digitalization of for persons with disabilities, and uh, in the school system, in the university, uh, there is there are is many work that is being done since years for the digitalization of books for uh, uh, students with disabilities. On the other side, uh, there is a very strongly uh, and very uh, very quickly uh, growing uh, electronic book market. And uh, I think that the, those are two processes that uh, um, must, uh, there must be a, 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 a convergence of the two processes. I will talk about two, two, two topics. One is uh, the formats and devices, and the other are related to the rights. Uh, the, the, the main formats uh, know, uh, at present are the e EPUB, uh, that is uh, the e e I, the iPad and the Apple family uh, format, the Mobi ACW, that is the format for the uh, for the Kindle, the Amazon family, the Adobe DRM, the digital rights management uh, format, that is uh, shared by the many uh, devices and uh, there is a, uh, another format that is a DAISY format that this is an international open standard that uh, and uh, in the United States uh, there is uh, there are regulations uh, the, uh, there is a standard called the National Instructional Material Ac Accessibility Standard that is mandatory for the um, textbook publishers to have the the, the books uh, available in this format, in the NEMAS format, and this is uh, the uh, this uh, format is uh, a subset of the DICE standard. There are there are a lot of devices on the other side. The Kindle, Nook, uh, and other readers, uh, the different uh, brands, uh, it, the iPad, fam iPad, iPod, and iPhone family, the, the uh, another kind of tablet, uh, mainly with the Android operating system, uh, different uh, cell phones, and uh, <laughs> the all the desktops uh, and uh, notebooks uh, and netbooks pc mac and linux uh, this is uh, there are different uh, degree of accessibility in uh, the the in the traditional uh, devices uh, the accessibility is uh, well developed in the e-book e e readers mm, is not so generally is not very good. the The Apple family is uh, very well. The, the The Apple family devices have a very 
very well developed accessibility. And on the other, uh, another, uh, another, another view of this of this issue is the the rights. There are different kind of materials. Someone are uh, someone uh, are protected by copyright. That is another that are in the public domain or that are uh, uh, distributed under free licenses. And uh, also the in uh, many countries uh, there are waivers for persons with disabilities ab about the uh, copyright. And uh, even the uh, in the international orga organizations are in this uh, moment dis uh, related to intellectual property are discussing about an international waiver on the rights of, uh, of copyright for persons with disabilities. Um, there is a, a no, we, we, we have a, a couple of questions. Uh, will be the the ebooks will be the the wide door to reading for persons with disabilities that will enhance the access to uh, the uh, writing materials for persons with disabilities, or will be a new uh, field full of barriers. There is a, that is a question. I think that the uh, Many of the popular devices uh, are not very accessible. Uh, some of the formats uh, are uh, maybe accessed from the from the desktop uh, or or PCs or uh, Mac uh, or Linux uh, devices, and and uh, perhaps this, these formats have uh, an, uh, an additional possibility of accessibility. And uh, I, uh, I think that uh, the, the objective uh, in, in the policies must be to include accessibility and universal design in uh, the e-books standards and the design and promote the acc accessible format in e-books and e-books reader and universal design in e-books. And uh, I think that the free access to public domain e-books in, in the digital libraries uh, may be a process that uh, enhances this uh, diffusion of the good practices in the in the e-book e industry. I, I think some uh, of the formats, the EPUB format and the DAISY format, there is um, and no, a process of convergence that uh, I think will uh, perhaps this uh, EPUB, uh, DAISY and the National Instructional Material Accessibility Standard perhaps may be the future standard of uh, accessible uh, e-books. Well, uh, I'm sorry for the technical inconvenience. I hope uh, that you can <laughs> that you, my voice have a, have a right to Baku with uh, in intelligibility. Uh, thank you, Jorge. Uh, I can assure you your presentation uh, was excellent and the quality and the uh, content, of course, and we are very happy to have you with us and please stay with us because at the, uh, after the presentations uh, I, I hope to have questions and answers and, uh, and you, you, you may take some questions uh, related to your extremely interesting uh, presentation. Now, uh, Without further ado, uh, let me go to uh, uh, the next presentation. And before doing that, uh, it will be uh, uh, the presentation of web accessibility now uh, from uh, 
Shadi Abu Zara. Shadi is, uh, uh, coordinates the Web Accessibility Initiative outreach in Europe and accessibility evaluation techniques. He is the activity leader of this initiative, International Program Office, and uh, he asked me to shorten the introduction. So, uh, without uh, uh, going uh, into further details, let me give you the floor, Shadi. Yes, hello everybody in the room and uh, around the world. Um, so, this is a presentation from uh, uh, talking about the work of the World Wide Web Consortium. For those who don't know, W3C is an international standards body that develops web standards, standards for the web. So um, things like HTML and CSS and lots of technical specifications. It's led by the inventor of the World Wide Web, um, Tim Berners-Lee. And so um, in this presentation, I want to talk with you about getting those, f first introducing the standards from W3C relevant to accessibility for people with disabilities, and then talking about how to get those implemented to actually leverage the benefits uh, of inclusion for everyone. Um, sorry, I'm not sure how to switch slides. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Okay. So um, the Web Accessibility Initiative is part of the W3C, is part of the World Wide Web Consortium, and focuses on making the web accessible for people with disabilities. Um, amongst other work, we're most well known for the guidelines that we developed that are internationally recognized as the standard for web accessibility, um, and so there are three guidelines that work together. One is for web content, how to make web content accessible to people with disabilities. The other is the user agent accessibility guidelines. This talks about how to make browsers and assistive technologies themselves uh, uh, accommodate the needs of people with disabilities. And uh, finally, authoring tool accessibility guidelines. Authoring tools are all the tools that are used to develop content and provide it on the web. This becomes very important in the web 2.0 area where um, social networking platforms, uh, user-generated content, and all sorts of other uh, content that is being continually created needs to be um, created in an accessible way, but also those tools themselves need to be accessible for people with disabilities. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit more about the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, WCAG 2.0, because this is really the centerpiece, one of the cornerstones of web accessibility. And uh, version 1.0 of the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines was published in 1999. Mm -hmm. And since 2008, we have an updated version of the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, which is um, provided under W3C specification, so it's a royalty-free open standard available to everyone. We have translations in more than 25 languages now, and we invite more translations. Um, and also, just very recently, this standard has also been adopted by ISO as ISO 4500. Um, it's, it's, it's the same. It's been passed through the, the so-called PASS process which is um, an, an, an adoption process. We're also seeing adoption of WCAG 2.0 in Europe on a European uh, uh, commission level um, in, in a new standard that is being developed through the European standards organizations. Uh, we're also seeing adoption of WCAG 2.0 um, as is in uh, Section 508 refresh in the U.S., uh, the, the U.S. Access Board um, um, is looking at adopting WCAG 2. Um, and also internationally in Australia, Canada, Japan, and Korea, and many other countries, we see adoption of WCAG 2. So um, I guess in the context of this presentation, what we're talking about, sustainable benefits, um, the, the adoption of an international standard 
um, helps the market, helps accelerate uh, the availability of accessible content and accessible products for people with disabilities. So let me tell you about the Way Act project, which is an EC-funded um, project that has just been uh, launched a year ago, and um, I personally find very exciting because it addresses accessibility. Even though we are a standards organization, it tries to address accessibility from a more uh, developer-oriented uh, approach, from, from the actual implementer's approach, uh, to try to tackle the discrepancy we currently have between uh, the standards that are widely recognized and widely adopted uh, and the actual level of implementation on the ground. There continues to be that discrepancy and we need um, mechanisms in order to um, um, make accessibility happen. So um, the main objectives of the, this EC funded project is to foster and, and, and uh, continue encouraging international cooperation uh, between stakeholders. Um, I think particularly in accessibility, given that it's such a multi-stakeholder uh, and, and, and multidisciplinary field, that this cooperation aspect um, it continues to be alive. Um, also providing more technical guidance for web developers, but also technical guidance on evaluation of accessibility. Um, we, we, we do see different trends and things that um, in terms of evaluation and testing that actually uh, do confuse the situation with regard to the level of accessibility. So we hope to make a contribution in that. And last but not least, coordinate with researchers, uh, with research and development, uh, which is again very important for accessibility because people with disabilities tend to use the latest technologies and the latest uh, research uh, uh, results um, and so um, working with research is an important aspect for accessibility. So I won't go into too much detail about the technical work of the project but some of the highlights um, are uh, the development of a website accessibility conformance evaluation methodology uh, which is also uh, becoming uh, uh, prominently uh, um, but with each draft. It's still in a working draft mode. This is a supporting guidance. Um, it's, uh, all those resources are developed in the collaborative and in the open W3C um, uh, standardization process. So um, again, th the invitation here for collaboration, for working together, which is one of the big benefits in, in terms of ensuring accessibility to meet the different perspectives and different needs internationally. Um, I, I will skip just in the interest of time and go to the next slide um, about, um, oh, the, you missed the slide there. Um, just, again, call for participation and, and, and stretching the arms to say that we really look for um, participation from all around the world, from different cultures and regions. Uh, we, we know there are big differences in terms of uh, assistive technologies, the use of assistive technology, affordability of assistive technologies, um, and, and how we can work together to make standards and guidelines, uh, but also guidance for implementation uh, that meet those different needs um, and help um, make sure that we can actually all benefit from the benefits of accessibility and inclusion. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Shadi. As always, your presentation is uh, full of information and very interesting material. Uh, just uh, uh, anticipating the questions, uh, I, I do have one question concerning mobile technology. Uh, we have talked about it last year, probably the year before as well, and now uh, I, I couldn't hear about it. So can you tell us something about it? Yes, very good question, Peter. Th thank you. Yes, m mobile continues to be a key technology. Uh, it, it's being rapidly deployed, rapidly used, also by people with disabilities internationally. Um, it's, it's kind of interesting because when first the touchscreen phones came out, people were very concerned, and there was the, 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 the concern that this uh, is going to uh, make 
life very inaccessible, particularly for blind people. Um, but actually, um, it was shown very impressively that also th this technology, touchscreen technology, can be made accessible. And actually, Arun's presentation uh, l later also uh, mentions that. We do address technical guidance on how to make web content uh, and, and web apps accessible uh, on the mobile platform. Uh, we're doing that through uh, working on HTML5. I just didn't want to get too technical in the presentation, but it is continues to be, I think, a main aspect of accessibility that we uh, all need to address together. Thank you, uh, Shelly. Probably you will have other questions, but uh, at the end of the uh, presentations. So uh, let me go uh, to the next one, uh, and that is uh, just a short presentation about the uh, activities in the ITU, uh, taking into account persons living with disabilities in the activities of the ITU. Uh, Well, as uh, all of us know, uh, according to the WHO uh, and World Bank uh, joint study, there are about 1 billion people, which is 15% of the first population who lives with some type of disabilities. And I think in this figure, we do have uh, the disabilities related to, to age related disabilities. And probably this figure is going to increase uh, so we are not talking about a minor issue, it's an extremely important issue. Uh, the information and communication technologies uh, are naturally extremely important to all of us and uh, we should be aware that these uh, technologies uh, contribute to the improvement of lives of persons living with disabilities provided we follow those standards which have been uh, uh, so well uh, told us uh, in the previous presentation. And uh, there, there are very uh, important uh, uh, efforts being made in this aspect. It's to improve access to basic public services such as education, health, government information, uh, in general to improve access to information and sp smart so services which are adapted to the special needs of persons with disabilities. Uh, the International Telecommunication Union is an international organization promoting access, accessibility of the ICTs. Uh, the ITU's mandate in accessibility is defined in uh, one of its resolutions, which was uh, resolved in 2010 in Guadalajara in sp during its plenipotentiary conference. Uh, mentioning the telecommunication ICT for persons with disabilities, including age-related disabilities. Uh, I have to mention that there is, uh, you might have heard about the upcoming uh, World uh, Conference of International Telecommunications and the International Telecommunication Regulations, that is the ITRs, and I have to uh, share with you that there is a proposal uh, from Hungary uh, about the accessibility for persons with disabilities, that is to make uh, available technologies uh, based on standards available to, to persons with dis disabilities. Uh, I, I am convinced that this ITR will be uh, uh, adopted by the conference and uh, I think this is a quite a major step ahead. Uh, in the ITU, uh, we have had always the support for the activities of the Dynamic Coalition on Accessibilities and Disabilities, and uh, basically uh, this uh, workshop has been made possible uh, because of the ITU. Uh, 
Uh, just to give you some examples uh, of the ITU activities, uh, as you may know in the ITU there are study groups where experts from all over the world come together to work on standards and recommendations. Uh, in the ITU you have three sectors, you have the telecommunication uh, standardization sector where you have uh, at least two working groups, uh, two study groups uh, working on uh, different aspects of accessibility, operational aspects of service provision and telecommunications management, that is study group two, um, multimedia coding systems and application, that is study group 16, and we have a focus group on audiovisual media accessibility. Uh, in the R sector, that is the radio communication sector, we have the study group 5, which works on mobile services, and in study group 6, uh, uh, is working on broadcasting services. Uh, there is a general effort uh, in the ITU to make all the websites conform with the standards uh, provided by the uh, WCAG. Uh, getting back to the uh, D sector, that is the development sector, uh, it is also involved uh, uh, through its question 21 slash 1, access to telecommunication ICT services by persons with disabilities with special needs. Uh, but I can go on with this list, uh, probably uh, you will have now some idea that ITU is very serious about the accessibility issues. Uh, some tangible outputs. Uh, we have a telecommunication accessibility checklist uh, which is to be incorporated into all ITU recommendations. Uh, we have uh, a recommendation F790 uh, which gives the guidelines on accessibility for all the persons and persons with disabilities. And we have uh, the ITUR report, BT.2207, uh, Accessibility to Broadcasting Services for, for Persons with Disabilities. Uh, just another example, uh, ITU guidelines for policy makers and regulators. For instance, we have a publication on Making TV Accessible report. Uh, there is a cooperation uh, between uh, ITU and the G3 ICT, uh, the result of which was the accessibility toolkit for persons li living with disabilities. And there are several workshops, meetings, uh, events to raise uh, awareness, uh, jointly with UNESCO, the Euro European Broadcasting Union, the World Standards Corporation, or as I've already mentioned, the G3 ICT. Uh, we also support uh, activities in this field in the uh, uh, developing countries. Uh, there are community ICT centers for persons with disability implemented in Armenia, Ethiopia and Mali in 2011 multi-purpose community telecenters for persons with disabilities in Burkina Faso, Ethiopia and Sri Lanka and there were several capacity building activities throughout the world uh, using the e-accessibility toolkit. Uh, there is another aspect uh, you may have uh, uh, you may consider that is the physical accessibility and there, there are some uh, uh, initiatives in the ITU to make it even more accessible for persons uh, with disabilities. As you may know, in the ITU there are several meetings, uh, workshops, uh, conferences, and these are being attended by persons with disabilities. So uh, uh, ITU tries to make it best uh, uh, within the budgetary uh, restrictions. Uh, to make these meetings accessible for persons with disabilities. Uh, our next goal is to develop an ITU accessibility policy to be presented to the Council in 13 for endorsement. 
Well, uh, as I mentioned uh, very briefly, there are uh, budgetary restrictions and probably funding is needed. Funding to, uh, to, to fund all these activities and uh, to implement the ITU accessibility policy, uh, to sponsor experts coming to ITU meetings and to, to fund additional projects. Uh, there is an accessibility fund in the ITU uh, which uh, was uh, created by Resolution 175 which is open to voluntary contributions from ITU membership, private sector organizations, non-for-profit organizations and individual contributions. So uh, uh, these contributions, as I mentioned, uh, will be used to promote representations of persons with disabilities in the ITU activities, make ITU activities accessible for these persons and support the implementation of the projects. So uh, finally I would like to uh, make a call that let's work together to improve the lives of one billion people and uh, we would like to bring this message to the General Assembly of the UN in 2013 uh, to the high-level session on disabilities and development. So uh, the final message is get involved. So that was uh, the presentation about uh, activities in the ITU. Now uh, I would like to continue with another presentation about the... I'm, I'm changing my hat And I'm also a vice chairman of the Commission of Science and Technology uh, of, and Technology for Development. And uh, you might have heard that there was a working group uh, on the improvements of the IGF. Uh, within this uh, uh, commission and I was chairing the the working group we have given 39 uh, recommendations and among the recommendations we have three related to accessibility for persons with disabilities So uh, the Commission uh, has its mandate, uh, it has two mandates, one mandate is the science and technology for development, the other is the business follow-up. So uh, the working group has been uh, created. I uh, just want to mention that the working group uh, was a multi-stakeholder working group, which is uh, uh, almost unique within the UN system. Uh, we had 23 member states and five, five representatives from uh, the business, academia, civil society and international organizations. Uh, to improve the IGF, uh, we have agreed on five main topics, uh, which you can see here. And I want to go straight away uh, to the recommendations related to disabilities. So, uh, in the main themes, uh, number four was broadening participation and capacity building. And uh, we have recommended that although participation in the IGF has increased with time, it should be further broadened both at the annual meetings and in the preparative phase to involve new stakeholders, in particular from developing countries and especially least developed countries and persons with disabilities and other unres unre the represented groups. That was uh, one of the recommendations. The second one was related to captioning mechanisms 
that facilitate remote participation, such as live transcripts, should be kept as an integral part of the IGF. Such mechanisms are valuable, invaluable not only to remote participants, but also to non-English speakers and to persons with disabilities. <coughs> I think at the very beginning of the IGF, that was the, the original intent, to have the captioning uh, for persons with uh, a hard of hearing, uh, but it was a, a real success in other fields as well. Uh, and the third recommendation, it is important to ensure the accessibility of IGF's facilities to persons with disabilities. Those of you who attended previous IGFs, <laughs> Uh, could have had the experience that uh, it wasn't always easy and uh, Shadi can tell us something about it uh, uh, well which was uh, the least to say full of barriers uh, and the last one what I want to mention is uh, improve the online visibility and accessibility of the IGF a first step in this direction should be to enhance the IGF's visibility by providing interactive functionalities and making it more attractive and inclusive. It should also maintain its conformance with the open standards and further improve accessibility to persons with disabilities. So uh, uh, I'm glad that we managed to get at least these recommendations into the set of recommendations of the working group and we could make some progress in this direction. So uh, this uh, concludes my presentation. And uh, our oh, last one, uh, if we still have some time. Uh, we have planned to have Professor Aaron Mechta with us, but unfortunately he, he is not with us, so uh, uh, I asked Shadi to make a short summary of his presentation uh, and I'm really grateful to him that he volunteered after I asked him. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll try to do Arun's presentation justice, but, but we really felt that um, it, it would be unfortunate to de deprive you of Arun's uh, presentation. Ar Arun really um, ha does excellent work on um, assistive technologies and um, also um, on access for people with cognitive disabilities, people uh, uh, um, who, uh, have, uh, who are blind, deaf, uh, or deafblind, and, and so r really um, um, don't like to say the word edge cases, but 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 you know um, really um, often uh, I, I think he puts it best: people who often fall through the cracks um, when when we are working on policies, when we are talking about inclusion, and when we are talking also about standardization. Um, so um, in his presentation, which I really recommend you to uh, uh, maybe have a look at on the ITU website, it's 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 posted there. Um, um, from from the um, website for this uh, session, and so he talks, for instance, about uh, Stephen Hawkins, who who's um, f fully disabled and only able to operate uh, the, the the entire computer through just one button, um, and actually uh, be uh, an important member of society and community and a and, and a good computer, uh, good, good contributor, um, and so. Uh, you know, he goes on to say that um, this is part of the, uh, well, uh, one of the solution that exists, but how about others who still continue to be excluded, uh, be it because of the costs of assistive technologies, the affordability, uh, or, or uh, even uh, just the availability of some of the things he talks, for instance, about um, building on Android platforms um, um, different uh, uses of, of Braille um, rather than to have to buy expensive hardware uh, such as a refreshable Braille uh, display. Um, but he also talks very importantly besides the technical aspects about the, the social aspects of inclusion or 
uh, exclusion for that matter. Uh, for instance, uh, missing uh, to count people with, uh, who are deafblind in the census, in, in, he describes in India, um, but that's just one example. Um, this, this is often the case. We see also differences in terms of defining disability, defining reasonable accommodation uh, throughout the world. So, um, yeah, I, again, I, I, I hope I'm, I'm, I'm doing justice in this summary to uh, Arun and, and, and his presentation. And um, yeah, the, the conclusions go around that addressing the access, uh, w which has also been echoed by Peter, requires really working together. Uh, different disciplines, different domains, working together to make sure that we can provide solutions that work, uh, solutions that are affordable, and solutions uh, that are uh, available to that local community. So, back to you, Peter. Uh, thank you, Shadi. Uh, 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 your summary was, I think, excellent. And uh, now I turn to Judy if uh, there was some removed uh, remarks and uh, observations. Thank you, thank you Peter. Um, so far, we still have Andrea and Jorge online. Can you hear me? Okay, so far we still have Andrea and Jorge online. I'm, I'm not sure what happened to Alexandra, though she's, it shows like she's um, um, still on. Um, Andrea says she has one comment. Um, Andrea, could you speak? Okay, I'll try. Hang on. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Andrea? Hi, Judy. Hi. Hi. I just, um, it's, I'm on the um, PC and I have not been able to get the Apple to work yet but what i wanted to say is thank everybody for all the effort they put into this to do it remotely thank you judy very very much for being the the moderator and i think it went very very well i think we have some work to do on how to do it a bit more smoothly but that wasn't anything to do with anybody's fault i think this is such a new medium to use that we need to be very careful I've made a lot of observations, and I've been talking to you, Judy, through the chat box, <coughs> how we can make it better. And um, we'll review those in the DICAD meeting later, perhaps, and I'll write a small little paper on that. But thank you, Shadi. Thank you, Jorge. And big, big thank you to Peter Major for doing this uh, and doing such a great job. And thank you for your kind words in the beginning. And thank you, Alexandra. Thank you, Bernard. I think, I think it went very, very well, but we've got to work out a better way to use WebEx uh, over such uh, a long distance. Over thank you, Andrea. Judy. Thank you very much. Um, just a final remark from Alexandria. Um, this is Alexandria Kaspari. OK, not me, Alexandria. <laughs> To thank everybody, especially Peter and Shady. Thanks, Bernard and Judy, and all the staff in CTU from the DICAD Secretariat. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Judy. Uh, I now t turn to the persons who are physically present here for any questions, remarks, or observation. Uh, we will be just glad. Uh, how to improve our work, uh, what suggestions you have, what, what wasn't clear in the presentations, what additional information you would like to have.
Hello? Hello, do you hear me? Okay. Uh, my name is Rima Kuprita. I'm representing an organization called IFL, which stands Electronic Information for Libraries. So my name organization says that I do work with libraries all kinds of libraries, academic libraries, public libraries. And I was just wondering, is ITU as a partnership or has been working with libraries because they sort of natural places that serve people with disabilities? And I saw you mentioned um, uh, telecenter projects um, and I didn't see like libraries as being as a partner. So my question is, have you been reaching out or working with um, libraries? Uh, thank you for this question. Uh, uh, I have to admit that I'm not aware that we are in partnership with that, but it doesn't mean that we are not. It's, it only means that I'm not aware. Uh, uh, eventually, if uh, uh, I can ask my colleagues back uh, in Geneva or, or, or Andrea, I'm not sure where you are now, uh, can you comment on that? Uh, in case you can't or there's no answer, that probably we can get back and, uh, uh, to you later on. Um, there's a comment from Alexandria. Um, Alexandria says ITU has a big library at headquarters and uh, I think we would welcome their collaboration. That I'm comes here. from... Can you hear me? Yes, yes, Andrea, I can hear you. Andrea? Okay. Yeah, uh, actually part of that comment comes from me. We are not actually, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Um, we don't at this present time work with libraries per se, uh -huh. but that's just, okay. Okay, but I think we would welcome the collaboration and if you would like to give your contact details to Peter Major, we can, in fact, maybe begin with you and your library if you would like to join DICAD. Mm -hmm. Yes, to respond, we, we don't have our own library. We work with libraries globally, with the de developing and transition countries. And I would, invite, would like to use an opportunity to invite to come to our dynamic coalition session tomorrow at 2.30, if I'm not mistaken. That's a new coalition created this year. It's access, public access to internet and libraries. So it will be a, a good, uh, good starting point. Uh, I, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I tried and come, and uh, probably all of us have tried to come uh, who, 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 who are not committed to other, uh, other workshops. Uh, thank you for the invitation, and probably we shall keep in contact. A any other questions? Yes, please. Hello. Okay, sorry. Um, so you mentioned in your presentation that there will be a proposal to the UN General Assembly. Um, uh, are there any particular details of that proposal and is there a lead group of countries that are pushing uh, you know, to have this uh, proposal um, you know, put forth in, in the next year's uh, General Assembly? Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, in fact, I mentioned two things. Uh, uh, in, in next year in the General Assembly, uh, there will be a high-level meeting on accessibility, uh, uh, which will be an event on its own. Uh, right now, this week and next week, uh, the General Assembly is uh, taking on board the recommendations of the uh, Commission of Science and Technology for Development. That is the working group which gave recommendations to the IGF, to improvement of the IGF itself. Now, these recommendations have been already accepted by the Commission of Science and Technology for Development. 
have been endorsed by the Economic and Social Council of the UN and it's now before the uh, General Assembly but any support any support is very much appreciated in this aspect so uh, I, I, I'm sure uh, well to, to give you a, a very quick background uh, the recommendations have been compiled in a consensual way uh, there was no voting of course and nothing like that but the importance is it was in a multi-stakeholder environment and that is unique and even even in spite of that in the UN system we managed to have something on the table so probably uh, any support is very much appreciated thank you I'd just like to add that um, in Asia Pacific because I'm from the Asia Pacific region that there's a lot of governments that are looking at this and the APAC group are actually um, very serious about uh, access for a disability so um, I definitely will forward this to to them and um, yes and I'm, I'm, so we will just these countries can can basically just uh, forward their support or whatever to, to you directly is that right okay, thank you yes please Can I just add an, a comment on, on, on your response, Peter, from Alexandria? Alexandra says, um, to compliment Peter on the reply, ITU will present its work, of course, member states can support at the UNGA next year. Hello, can you hear me? My name is Deirdre Williams, and I come from St. Lucia in the Caribbean. And I'm here sort of unofficially for the association of and for people with disabilities in St. Lucia. But I'm not going to speak about that. I, I discussed with Judy before I came here about the issue of remote participation and the issue of disability. I think when you're talking about these meetings, the people who are working on remote participation and the people who are working on access for disability need to collaborate much more closely because, like myself last year, I was in St. Lucia and the meeting was in Nairobi and I was disabled by about 6,000 miles of space in between us. So I, I work quite a lot with the remote participation aspect and I would I would feel happy if those two groups came closer together. Thank you. Thank you very much for this remark. Uh, I, we tried to do our best and we tried to collaborate and uh, we, we, we have to admit that we are still in the learning curve and it will take some time and uh, it, it was a very good experience for us and that was the first time we did that with remote participants with remote panelists so uh, uh, on the whole uh, I think the experience was a very positive one and we know how to improve and what to improve but thank you thank you for that uh, yes Yeah, my name is uh, Omar from uh, Telecom Regulatory Authority in Oman. I'd like to share with you that just that we are uh, in the process of developing uh, guidelines to provide service for people with special needs in Oman. And uh, it's still not final, not approved, but uh, we are in the process of developing this. And uh, uh, actually we, we put, uh, you know, certain uh, minimum set of services as an obligation uh, on the operator to be provided to the people with special needs and uh, we are uh, also planning to fund uh, mobile handsets for deaf and uh, blinds so uh, we hope that uh, by end of this year or beginning of next year we will be having this uh, guidelines approved and uh, uh, people uh, with disability will, will, will be benefiting during the next year inshallah
Yes, um, th this is excellent news. Um, I've, I've been to uh, Oman myself uh, several times and I've been seeing the, the, the developments there and how exciting uh, the, the changes are. W one thing uh, just to um, t talk about which is really, really important to accessibility is harmonized standards. Um, one of the issues that we see is when uh, countries adopt standards, sometimes what ha may happen is that um, uh, th there may be differences or changes as the standard is being adopted. And what that causes is that um, th the country then cannot benefit from the know-how, from the tools, uh, from, from the technologies that are already available and will need to uh, redevelop those. For in the instance, evaluation tools or authoring tools. Uh, or also all the information um, like code libraries and, and, and code samples and so on. Uh, so I would be really happy to uh, follow up with you and work with you and, and maybe answer any questions that you may have while you're developing that uh, local standard. As I said, uh, WCAG 2 has now been also adopted by ISO, uh, which may make it much easier in, in, in countries around the world to uh, recognize it and adopt it, at least for that web accessibility part. But there's also many other international standards on other parts of ICT, and uh, I, I, I would really suggest reusing those uh, where possible rather than to create new ones from scratch that might have conflicting uh, requirements. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I just, uh, once we finalize the, 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 the draft, we'll be having a public consultation, so we would like to see if any comments from interested parties around the world. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for this uh, statement and sharing this knowledge with us. Uh, well, uh, I think we, uh, Judy, last word. Andrea would like to say something. Andrea, please go ahead. Andrea? Thank you. I've got two comments. One to the lady in St. Lucia. Uh, Judy and I have been chatting back and forth about all the different problems that we are encountering. Some of the problems do not deal with the interaction between the people who are putting it on and us, but deal with the limitation of the tool that we are using. All conferencing tools have shortcomings and are not necessarily designed properly for persons with disabilities. Secondly, the gentleman who just spoke about implementation of standards in his own country, I couldn't quite hear everything, but the ITU has a policy maker's toolkit, which he can find online, which assists in the very subject that Shadi does. And Shadi is the, uh, with W3C, is the last word on web accessibility, but there are other standards and other methods of implementation, and this particular handbook, I think, would be very useful to this gentleman, and he can find it on the web. Perhaps, uh, Peter, you could assist him in doing that by showing him the web page, and uh, if not, he can get in touch with Alexandra, Gaspari, or myself. We're on the web page, on the DICAD page, and we can help him direct that, direct him to those, to that publication, which is free, like the uh, TV uh, accessibility web page, I mean book that Peter mentioned. And thank you again, everyone, for working so hard to try and make this a successful remote participation. We will improve with time because we all work well together, and we've taken notes on what we need to improve. Thank you. Th thank you, Alexandra. So there is nothing else left for me but uh, to thank you all for participating in this uh, uh, workshop and very actively. And uh, I hope to see you next year. And uh, please do not forget about the workshop which was mentioned about the open ab about the libraries uh, tomorrow or Thursday. Uh, it's done.
and uh, we are going to have a DCAT meeting. Oh, it does coincide with that. Anyway, uh, we, we shall work it out. Uh, so thank you again and see you next year. Peter? Peter?